Happy New Year. <laughs> Haven't seen or heard from you guys in a minute. So this is going to be short. It looks a little much here, but we're going to get through it. I promise you. This is exciting. It's a new year. It should be exciting. What are you doing different this year? I hope we're doing some of the things that we focused on last year, this year. So anyway, we have finally made it uh, to the end of chapter three. The end of chapter three, it's been a minute, and chapter four is pretty short, but uh, we got through chapter three. That was a very important chapter, as I said. And here's one of the really important passages in this chapter, and it starts here at the 31st verse going through 35. Mark 3, 31 through 35. Jesus' mother and brothers sin for him. Then his brothers and his mother came, and standing outside, they sent to him, calling him. And a multitude was sitting around him, and they said to him, Look, your mother and your brothers are outside seeking you. But he answered them, saying, Who is my mother or my brothers? <laughs> Love this. And he looked around in a circle at those who sat about him and said, really love this. Here are my brother and my mother, and whoever does the will of God is my brother and my sister and mother. So if you pay attention, there are two things going on here. You've got Jesus's family who came after him in the last two passages before this, seeking to pull him, saying that he has lost his mind. He was out of his mind. We're not going to go through that again, but the same people now that they see that the crowd didn't care that they thought that he had lost his mind. The multitude is still sitting around him. The multitude is still at his feet. The multitude is still fascinated with him. And so now that they see this, you kind of wonder if the whole point, in the, what did they actually want from him now? Before they wanted to pull him because they thought he had lost his mind because he'd given up everything, his security, his supposedly livelihood to go and continue to teach this gospel at the height of the Pharisees and everyone literally trying to take him out. So they tried to, I don't know, maybe they were trying to shield him from that before when they were saying he's out of his mind, let's go get him. But now they see that clearly he doesn't care what they thought about him. Clearly the crowd, the crowd doesn't care if he's out of his mind or not. They're still fascinated with him. They still want to be at his feet. And so the family comes and they want to do what? Do they want to protect him? He clearly has shown that he doesn't need to be protected. Or maybe they want this crowd that is still fascinated with him, this crowd that still sits at his feet, to know that they are related to him. Ever been in those situations where folks want to call you out on Facebook just to let other people know that they know you when they know that you know that you don't even really have a relationship with them? I meet a lot of people that are like, wow, I just met somebody that was your best friend or your whatever friend, and I'm saying to myself, don't have that many friends, you know? And so it's interesting because how do we determine who our friends are? What does it mean when you talk about your family? We call each other fam on Facebook. We're like, good morning, fam. You know, so what does family really mean to you? Well, Jesus says, this is who my mother, my brother, and my sister are. Those who are willing to do the will of God. That's deep. It's deep. For the simple fact that for you and I who are trying to do the will of God, it says that Jesus calls us his real family. Do you know? We have that attachment. So even when your family's not acting the way that you want them to act, you know that the real family that really matters are the people that there's that common bond, the people that are doing the will of God. Now that's deep because in our situations, we've just come off of the major holidays. How was your Thanksgiving? and your Christmas. <laughs> How was the family time? You know, and we all say it, you know, whether it's good, bad, or indifferent. It's a challenge. Why is it a challenge? Not because they're your family, but these are people that you're going to be 
in an environment that you may not have necessarily chosen to have dinner with them. You know, when you go out to dinner, you're going out to dinner with people you choose to have a relationship with, people that you choose to be in their company. But during the holidays, a lot of times we have to be in these situations where we would, may not have necessarily chosen to be in the company of all of the individuals that are going to be there. And that presents a challenge to us. Why is it a challenge? Not because of all the stigmas associated with family, but for the simple fact that there is no interest or commonality a lot of times in the people that are your bloodline relatives, especially beyond the immediate family. And so do you want to sit in an environment with people that are different? We have to learn to do that because we're supposed to be able to get along with everybody. And understanding how to do that, to not engage in conversations that are so controversial, so conflictual, so sensitive to people. There's so many things that can talk about that everybody should be able to get some fun, some laughter out of. And so we work on those things. So holidays, unfortunately, these type only come twice a year. So we don't get as much practice as we need. But in this passage is a little bit more than that. And so I was just sitting here looking out the window and can you believe the weather? I mean, just like, okay, can I get some more tennis in? But it's in the 60s again today in the first week of January. And so things never look, you know, you can look out the window and tell if it's a cold day or a not so cold day. You can tell by how quickly the squirrels are moving. You can tell by how many birds are chirping because when it is really cold, they have, it's like they fly south in a day. Because then when it turns to be 65 or 70 degrees in a fluke, you'll hear them, you know, waking you up in the morning. <laughs> But for me, I'm always looking out over the garden and I'm saying, mm, should I go out here and kind of like just pull some things, do a little cleaning, a little adjusting. And so I thought about the different beds. And so in the beds, we have the carrots and the beets. And so the carrots and the beets, if I were to go out there now, I could move the dirt and I will find a lot of carrots. Why? Because we plant carrots and beet in the height of the summer when we're looking at blooms and things in their full manifestation but the carrots and the beets are not going to manifest until especially the carrots until early fall so by then all the other flowers are pretty much disintegrated and you forget that you've got some bounty under the ground especially me because i pretty much garden for therapeutic reasons i'm going to the farmer's market and getting carrots and things like that so you don't see those and the same thing with the beach, you could probably find a handful or so beneath the ground as well. And they're in the same bed. They're in the same bed because they're both considered to be root vegetables. And so you will get the beet tops and the carrot tops that will plentifully come during the summer. You can trim those tops, you can consume them. They're really, really good for you. Why? Because they're green foods and green foods do what? Green foods clean the blood. And so that's always a good thing, but they also have similar growing times and again the harvesting period is at about the same late uh, September early October and so that's what we call a good family whereas my lettuces my kale my collards they're going to be over in the flower bed that's closest to the fence closest to the shed why because there's a huge tree there which is going to give it an abundant amount of shade and you want them to grow close together so that they can shade each other because those are what you consider to be cold weather greens. But if you want to grow those in the summertime, you can do that by putting them in a situation where they will be able to give and provide shade for themselves because of where they're gonna be situated and they're not out in the middle of the sun like some of the other flower beds, so you have that protection. Then I have my watermelon patch, which is way over in the corner by itself. Why? Because it needs to spread out and take. Are you feeling where I'm going with this? So you talk about the different things that we grow and they're considered to be family vegetables, you know, beets and carrots. We have kales and collards and greens and you have your peppers and, you know, and why? Because they all have similar environmental needs whether it's shade or lots of sun, whether some need to be watered more often than the others, it's easier, it's easier to grow them through and to their maturity and to have a more bountiful harvest when they have the right environmental conditions. If I don't put those watermelons in a place where those vines can really spread and do their thing, it's a waste of time. 
And so when we think about that, Jesus is saying the same thing. He's saying, hey, let's grow together. The maturity of the saint, the maturity of the Christian comes from its environmental conditions, being around people and things that are going to support that thing that should be the center of your being. That thing that should be the center of your being should be Christ, God, the will of God. And when the people that I am hanging out with share the commonalities, like the, the beets need the, the sun and the, the rich soil, because they're going to grow so much, so deep beneath their soil, whereas the, the collards and greens, and you can literally put the, half an inch of soil on the top, drop your seeds in there, and within a few days, you're going to start to see them bud. And so that's good, so they start to mitigate together. Next summer, that soil is going to look different than the soil in the other flower bed. Why? Because they've been together, they were broken down together, they were pulled together. And it's the same thing with our friends. When we're going through our trials and tribulations, we share that with one another. Your testimony helps the fellow testimony, the, the fellow Christian with their life because your testimony should be similar in the sense that you're going against the grain. We're in the world, but we're not of the world. And so you're trying to go against what's popular. The things that are on social media that everybody's doing it's nice yes they're your friends they're your associates but to indulge in some of the conversations to even indulge and so always be in fly mode uh so that's pretty much it in a nutshell i mean it's a very important passage but the thing is is to know that focusing on the will of god puts you in the family of disciples puts you in the family of those who are trying to be mature Christians and that is what Jesus is saying you are my brother and my sister and 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 and, and think about what he's saying there the mother and the brother and the sister these are people in your family you'll do anything for your brother your mother and your sister and he's saying that I'm going to do anything for that person too that shares in my obedience to God and my desire and love to do the will of God and so that says a lot too. And so we all just want to get to a point where we start in this new year, finding out who you really are and where you should spend your time. Maybe it's time. We always try to do new things in January. I mean, really, everybody wants to be well, but I'm finding out people don't want to put the work in and it requires work. It requires discipline. It requires some thought, some planning, and some preparation. And either we want to do that or not. At some point, we're going to want to stop being sick and tired. That even sounds cliche. But at some point, you're going to say, I want to be better. I had COVID for a day and a half or so. And maybe from that whole bonding family thing, you know, we kind of all dropped our dodge. Nobody had masks on. And you're dealing with people that are more servants, so they're dealing with the public. And... Going into it, I hadn't talked to you guys probably since the last video because I was Santa, Miss Santa, the elves, and everything else for my dad. I literally was averaging about two hours of sleep for maybe a good week going into Christmas. Everybody was asking me if I was going this place or that place for Christmas, and I was like, I am going to be in the bed sleep on Christmas. And of course, that didn't happen, so you just keep pushing yourself. And then all of a sudden, I just didn't feel well. And I was like, oh man, it feels like I have the flu because my body was a little achy one day when I'd come in from playing tennis, getting ready for the end of the year tennis tournament in which I was seeded number one. And I knew I was going to win that tournament. I was just too through when I could not get out of bed the next day. And then someone dropped me a COVID test when it was a little skewed. And then the next day I took it again and it was positive. But I guess by then I was done with whatever I was done with. Which is also why this part of this is very important because I always tell people it's not whether or not you can't get COVID or cancer or anything else. It's whether or not your immune system is strong enough so that it doesn't stay there. You know, can cancer survive in your immune system? Do you know, your immune system was built to fight and protect you. From viruses but when the antibodies are non-existent because 
we have abused them by eating a bunch of devitalized foods, then you're going to suffer when you do get sick. Hopefully you'll recover from the sickness. But when you are, you just kind of like, you know, take it for what it is. And I was like, okay, this is God telling me to, I just need to take a day and rest. And so this is one of the things that we want to do today. We want to focus on something that's really great for the immune system. Um, I actually had to go order this because you can no longer get it even at the Asian markets because it's become such a popular thing. And now you have UNFI and your main distributors using it. But I also want to talk about it because of all the different recipes that you see and now the new packaging and new more processed, I call it processed food, with what they're doing with jackfruit, barbecue jackfruit, pool jackfruit. And I'm like, what is that? Do you know? So jackfruit is a grapefruit and it comes from, you know, the big giant jackfruit and typically in your Asian populations. And it can be as heavy as 25, 35 pounds. I love sweet jackfruit. So the jackfruit, you have, two, you have the great thing about jackfruit, unlike I say about a lot of your fruits and things that you have to be careful when you're eating bananas, they need to have spots on them. Uh, to be in the right state when you get a pineapple you always want to eat pineapples are great great for inflammation they have the natural uh enzyme bromelain available in it but it's not going to do you any good when you're eating it in an unripe state so when it's nice and pretty and green you can't eat it like that you actually want to wait until you can pull the top pieces out of the pineapple freely without little or any effort and then the same thing with the bananas they need to have brown spots on it so most of your fruit must be eaten in an un, in a ripened stage or else they're just not good for the body. Now, jackfruit, it's a little different. It is a fruit, mind you. And so when we have fruits, what do we say about cooking fruits? You really want to cook your fruit? No. But jackfruit can be eaten in two stages, which you call the ripe stage and the unripe stage. So this is when it's in the unripe stage, it's called green jackfruit. It's what you call the young green jackfruit, which has a ton of benefits for you. Constipation, blood pressure, just all of those great things go away when you start eating jackfruit. I like the jackfruit when it's become very ripe. So you can go to the store sometimes and they're selling jackfruit that's chopped in pieces. You can't freely eat that because it's still pretty much a young jackfruit. When you want to buy it and eat it for it, uh, the fruity part of it where it's sweet it almost tastes like juicy fruit bubble gum we'll cut through one one day i've been waiting to find one where i can bring the whole thing in and cut it up for you and so that's actually going to be almost yellow in appearance whereas the young jackfruit as you'll see in a minute is almost green in appearance and when it's young jackfruit like this it's very neutral in its flavor versus the ripened one like i said it tastes just like juicy fruit bubble gum and you just pull the pieces apart. They're dark yellow at that time. And when you buy them in the stores, they're usually $3.99 a pound. You want to make sure that the fruit, the jackfruit, is just almost looks like it's rotten. And then that way you can just pull the pieces off and eat them and be done with it. Don't let anybody cook ripened uh, jackfruit on you. So the young jackfruit, one of the ways that you know it is because it's almost impossible to get in it and cut it with regular tools which is why this is one of the few things that I buy out of cans because you have to get them shipped from there. So I'm gonna open this in a second. And I'm gonna show you it, what it does is it takes on the flavor of other foods. It's a great way to, for people that wanna eat meat. And I always tell people, what does meat taste like? What does chicken actually taste like? And you can't definitively say that in terms of a description that's gonna make sense to anybody that's not had it before. Most people that describe chicken are talking about chicken to other people that have had chicken. So there's no real description of what it tastes like. It's just basically describing the texture that you experience on your tongue. And so when we start talking about giving things a meaty flavor, basically what you want to do is recreate that type of texture on your tongue. <laughs> this is gonna be fun because I do not use canned goods, so I don't even know if this thing works. And that's gonna be, okay, this one looks like it's opening. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to get in this <laughs> to show you that. In the meantime, I'm gonna tell you the same thing that you can do, whether you use young jackfruit 
what I used to also use to make this type of dish is the, um, is it the artichoke? Not the artichoke, uh, hearts of palm. So hearts of palm come in a glass jar um, and you just kind of open them up and they kind of remind you of artichoke a bit. Uh, but they also have a very neutral, it's just, it's kind of got that texture of chicken, it's, it's bland, and it takes on the flavor of the other things that you use. And so this is what's the most important part about this. So I've already rinsed everything. So take a look at what we have here. We have immune boosters. We have fresh garlic, which you want to put in everything because it kills bacteria. So when I wasn't feeling well, you take a small piece of garlic, you slice it, put it inside of your tongue, and your cheekbone, you go to sleep and you're gonna be fine. You have fresh ginger. Ginger also is great when you're not well, you just use fresh ginger. It takes care of all gastrointestinal problems. It's got medicinal properties from thousands of years. Then we have cilantro, my favorite. You also want to have some fresh parsley. I don't have any fresh parsley. So you're gonna use a lot of cilantro. This came from the little farm around the corner. So we have fresh cilantro, cilantro, fresh mint, any of your fresh herbs have a ton of medicinal properties associated. Why first and foremost again? The green. Green foods clean the blood. But when you start dealing with herbs, you're taking it to the nth level in terms of just health. Then we have fresh spinach. When you're eating fresh spinach, you want to be a little careful. So sometimes what I'll do is just blanch it. Just, you know, when I'm rinsing it, I rinse it with somewhat a very warm hot water almost. Just spray it just because. It's known to have some of that crap in it. So then we have celery. Celery has the best source of organic sodium that the body needs in terms of keeping the extracellular fluid in your body well. So you know that we stay well at the cellular level. You want to make sure that your cells are balanced in the inside water and the outside fluid. Inside fluids, potassium, which we're going to get a lot of that from the jackfruit. But the sodium is what's really important. When there's pain, the body is achy, you always go to celery. And celery makes for a great addition to any type of uh, salad. I'm going to start chopping in a minute. I just want to finish telling you what we have. And then you want to go with red peppers. Red peppers, what? Red foods move the blood. The little seeds inside, a lot of medicinal properties associated with that. Brings out some flavor. And then I have ripe olives. So if you were making a chicken salad or something at home on your own, chicken, sardine salad, whatever the case may be. These are primarily the ingredients that people use. They would go with a mayonnaise, an onion, a celery, I guess, and some peppers. You know, so we're doing the same thing, but we're doing it on the natural sense. So instead of using mayonnaise, we're just going to lose a little bit of olive oil. And then when we uh, chop up our, our, our garlic and even mince a couple pieces of it, it's going to give it that like garlic rub feel thing. Then, I bet you think this is another spinach or something, but this is actually seaweed. So I've soaked the seaweed, and this is what's gonna really make the dish is the combination of the jackfruit and the seaweed. Hopefully I'm not sending you a picture later because I can't get that can open. And so while we are, you know, I just thought sometimes I have everything already pre-done for you this, today. I just want to show you how simple this is, you know, in terms of preparing stuff right in the flesh and getting it done. And I am going to do that because it is the, the beginning of the year. And so I just want to chat with you about a couple of things I've noticed last year, a couple of things I've noticed just in observing people's behavior as we're moving forward. I'm going to be presenting at the minister's conference just in a couple of weeks here. We're trying to do some things again <laughs> differently for the churches. When you're cutting your salads and putting things together, what you want to remember is that it's easy to just slice and stack and chop. And then that makes it very easy to do. You can go through quite a bit of stuff in little time or not. Uh, when you are not feeling well and you come into the kitchen and prepare a salad or a raw juice, I did lots of juices, you know. So what makes us get better when we're not well? First of all, you have to recognize and not panic about things. Some people, you know, whether they test positive for COVID or cancer, especially cancer, 
you know, people just get, you know, obviously, you know, it's it can be a bit disconcerting for people if you don't understand what makes the body well and what makes the body unwell. And so I look at all illness and disease the same, is that, you know, there's an imbalance in the system, those cells that we just talked about. Something's not well, and so what do we have to do to make it well? It's really not something that we have to be anxious about. It's not something we have to be fearful about. It's just a matter of fact. When you look out on the deck, what's making the deck not clear? If you've got some leaves on it or you've got some debris on it, so let's move it out of the way. And, you know, you really have to start looking at your entire system as this trash facility, you know, a wastebasket, so to speak. And when that wastebasket is filled with junk, then it no longer really serves you as a wastebasket. You can't put any type of garbage in it anymore. You have to empty it. And at some point, more than not, you need to clean out that wastebasket. So the more debris that gets in there, no matter how often you dump it, at some point you're going to have residual residue uh, that accumulates from you know the weeks or days or whatever of some of the items that were put into the trash can that maybe should not have been put into the trash can that begin to stain the sides of the trash can. And so what do you do to clean your wastebasket out? And so that's the same way we want to start looking at the human body. I mean, think about whatever condition you're in and you multiply that times 20 years, 30 years, 40 years. You know, that's about how long it took for your system to get into that condition. So are you going to get to the squeaky clean condition in just a couple of days? No, it's going to require not as many years or time. And that's the great thing about detoxing and healing is that for all the years of damage that has been done, you can quickly reverse things to the point where the body begins to turn the corner where you're no longer going in the pathway of sickness but going in another direction um, and I don't know anything that does that more quickly and more efficiently than raw juices raw juices and uh, raw dishes like this what's the benefit of this why why do this instead of steaming the cilantro and and boiling the celery and things because you want to maintain the live state of the food. When you're eating raw foods, you simply have live enzymes. And it's the live enzymes that keep us well. So here we have our garlic. You can do two things. When you're having, uh, when you're making your salads and things at home, so what determines whether or not you mince or chop or slice or dice something? For me, it has everything to do with the main ingredients in the particular dish that you're making. So the main ingredients in this are going to be the seaweed and the jackfruit. So when you'll see the jackfruit, it's gonna kind of look like tuna fish a bit. So you're gonna have chunks of it and then you're going to chop them up. And so we're gonna have something that's chopped up. Therefore, you wanna kind of dice and chop the ingredients that you're going to be using. Um, when I usually go for a minced garlic is when I'm making a sauce or the mac cream cheese that uh, it's like an imitation ver vegan virgin cheese, raw cheese. So you basically use lemon juice and fresh cashews and macadamia nuts and garlic and peppercorns. You blend them all up together. It's a very simple dish and it's got a fabulous uh, taste to it, unbelievable uh, taste. Um, people love that when I'm having events. And so that's when I may mince the garlic, when I'm going to be blending it, or it's going in with another type of juice. But when I'm going to be eating a dish that has big chunks of jackfruit and seaweed in it, then I want there to be the other type of texture so that you feel something on your tongue when you're consuming it. And so that's why we do go with more of the chop. Now, you don't want to spend an afternoon chopping fresh garlic. See how easy that is? So I already have quite a bit 
in there and it's taken two seconds. You basically just, again, the key is putting things together, stacking them on top of each other when you can, such as sliced peppers and things like that. But in the case of the fresh garlic, uh, always just invest in getting some of the containers where you have bulk, let somebody else peel all the garlic. But you wanna keep fresh garlic around too, so that when you're doing your juices that only require one piece of garlic, you wanna kinda of go with something that's just come out of the shell for me. And then sometimes on just a, if I'm not doing bulk salad, but I'm just cutting up a quick little salad for the evening, I'll use uh, garlic that comes right out of the shell. I'm gonna hold off on that red onion just so that I'm not all watery and funny looking in a second. Now garlic, I tend to go overboard. You wanna be careful with garlic because, I mean, uh, ginger, you don't need but a slither of it for it to bring taste where you can you can smell it. You can't smell it, but if you could smell. <laughs> if you could smell the camera, that's the great thing about doing live food presentations is that when you're here, you're gonna feel better just because of the aromatherapy that raw food produces, it has so much when you sniff it inside, it's going right into the olfactory system and it attaches itself. So what we wanna do is take our seeds and sprinkle them into our dish because there's a lot of medicinal values associated with that. Here's the piece I'm talking about in terms of stacking. So you take your red onion, you cut it, lay it onto the side that cuts the best, depending on what type of knife you're using. And you might have to flip it on the other side and that way cuts easier, see? So the more you do raw food preparation, the more you keep your hands in your own food and your own kitchen, the more you'll begin to find the tricks of the trade and be able to put these dishes together in little or no time. You'll be so pleased with yourself. And it's all an organic process because again, if you weren't, sometimes I'm just exhausted. <laughs> yeah, that's my reservation uh, resolution for 2023 is just to get a little more rest and just, you know what? It is what it is at the end of the day, it's gonna get done tomorrow. But when I'm sometimes tired and I really want a salad, but I just, want to eat it now, I don't really feel like chopping up anything. I have to really just remember what happens when I don't feel like doing that and I do it and it only takes 10 minutes and then there's so much more that comes to it. A new wave of energy comes from the process of just chopping up the salad because you're dealing with not just aromatherapy and smelling and getting the medicinal effects from everything that's going into the olfactory system, but color therapy. I mean, just almost every time you prepare any raw dish, you're gonna be dealing with a multiplicity of colors just because that's how you're gonna get your flavor. And so the red onions, I mean, I'm sorry, the red uh, peppers are important. You wanna probably use at least two. And again, you just kinda of wanna squeeze off those seeds. Now, I wish I could take your questions, but I will not be able to see them in the chat box while I'm chopping, but put them there if you need to. And so, again, I said, it's the beginning of the year, so what do we wanna focus on? Moving into 2023, how well were you last year? How do you even gauge, you know, wellness or not? You know, how many times were you ill on your back? And again, it's not that it's uncool to not get sick, but it's how long is it going to have you down? But even more importantly, how long does it take your body to recuperate from sickness? And more so than just being sick. But sometimes we have done a little more abuse and sometimes we have to kind of go with the flow, get help. And so some of you are going to have surgical procedures and that's okay. I always tell people if that's the route that you have to take at this particular time, 
maybe the task is just too arduous for you to just say, you know what, I'm not going to do that surgery. I'm just going to tough it out and do X, Y, and Z. Maybe you can't, so you have to do that. I always say at least go into a surgical procedure being as well as humanly possible so that you can recover nicely. Do you know? Because the more or the quicker you can get up and on your feet and start moving around, I was back on the tennis court in a few days. And then you just want to be able to not just make that recovery, but be able to stay recovered and not have like any setbacks. So here we have those ripe olives. My favorite, and as many of you probably know, are calamate olives. But I only use that in my salad salads. When I'm making dishes, and again, I'm looking for something to help create a little more texture on my tongue to give some diversity to the dish, I'm gonna go with the California ripe olives. They have their medicinal properties associated with it, but more so, it's the texture that it helps to bring to the tongue when you're using a variety of herbs and spices. You do that. All right, so this is not taking that. Is this taking long? Seems like it's moving pretty quickly, huh? And that's just, that's it, guys. I mean, you can, and I'm doing this because I eat a lot. And when you're having really good raw dishes, you know, they're easily going to um, stay fresh for a week or so, week, 10 days in the refrigerator. And you, you find something like, this is one of my favorite dishes. You wanna make a lot so that you're not tempted to fall back into your old habits of eating things that you may not should be eating. And so, you know, you get up in the morning, you can have this for breakfast if you want to. Have it for lunch and for dinner. Because you're just using or eating, consuming a whole lot of herbs. Or herbs and vegetables. Okay? So you're just gonna smell so good. And so this is what I'm saying too, is that not only the smell for the aromatherapy and the color therapy, but then just putting your hands. It's just like when you're working out in the garden in the summer. I tell people that's just so therapeutic in the sense of healing because when your hands get in the dirt, it's just always gonna be some great things going on. Now here's that bunch of spinach. And that's literally what it is, is a bunch of spinach. And you take it and you bold it up like that. You fold it together and again, it's stacking and chopping and slicing. So you just kind of go through that in a couple of seconds and you don't need to do anything else, but throw it into the dish. Now there's a, another process to this madness, is the fact that you don't have to put the jackfruit in there. You can simply throw some olive oil on here and that becomes your salad. You can put some raw corn in there if you want to. So I'm just gonna continue to toss everything that I put together. And I'm going to get like a super big uh, bowl to put everything in. Okay. So we have to get, let me see. <sighs> I don't know why I didn't think. And so it's taped together because I had it shipped. So the darn can, I don't know what they thought was going to happen in the mail. Uh, let me just see if I can get this all first. And so, <laughs> don't you just love when you don't think and use your brain ahead of time? I don't know what I was thinking. I don't even know if this thing works. Some of it's opening. I might need some help. All right, so we're gonna get it there in a minute. I'm gonna pull some magic out. I said, so they stop making things like this, like those ripe onions. They have the little pull thing. And this is when you have neighbors 
Okay, in the meantime, I'm going to start crying as I'm trying to figure out. So, when you're dealing with red onions, if you don't want to be all jacked up with the tears and things, what you do is try to get the external part off as quickly as you can, and then you run them under the cold water. And that takes away some of that stuff that makes you all teary-eyed. See if that works. And so what else do I want to talk to you about as we're going into the new year, your resolution, a resolve to just make yourself eat something green every day, you know, to make yourself have something green every day, not once a week or once a week, to make yourself wake up every single morning. I met this printer yesterday. And I was telling her, you know, she's asking me a million questions. And uh, I was saying every single morning that you wake up, you should have warm water, very warm water with the juice of a lemon. I mean, that is just perfect for liver health. I mean, there's just some things that we want to do every single day. And that's something that I do every single day. And so here's the red onion. The red onion is really easy. Once you come out of the skin, you want to just slice it in half. And then you quickly come along the side, keep cutting down, flip it around so that you can get that horizontal slice. And then you go and you vertical slice. You can tell those onions that were picked from the nice organic gardens because as soon as you slice into them, you are just like all kinds of teardrops are coming. So we can never have too many onions. Onions, when we were talking about the carrots and the beets earlier, we're talking about the family piece. How Jesus says, you are my family, my brother and my sister, when you obey the will of God. Well, onions and garlic are like twins. Just like oranges and grapefruits and lemons are in that citrus family. The medicinal healing family would be the red onions, chives, all that stuff and garlic. I mean, it's just the sulfur from the anisin, A-N-N-I-C-N, that you find in red onions. And it's medicinal properties for healing are just amazing. You know, um, when I first uh, found that I did not have the flu, and you have the virus, the first thing you want to do so whenever we have anything that's packaged in a can, you want to obviously rinse it because it's been packed with something that's going to preserve it. So you just throw a little water through it for the most part. The great thing is when you're dealing with foods like this that have so many good nutrients in it and you're going to mix them with garlic and red onion, you know what? it's gonna heal itself. So here's what the jackfruit looks like. For the most part, you've probably seen it, but not in its raw, young, green state. And you get, this is about how much you get out of a can. Quite a bit. You wanna be careful, because the edges are a little jagged. And so this is what the jackfruit, you see, looks like. Now what we're going to do is we're simply going to take our knife. You really don't even have to take your knife. You can simply take your fingers and pull it apart, but it's easier and faster 
I just chop on it. It's just like it has the texture of tuna fish, you know, like a chunky tuna fish or a tuna breast out of the can. And so all we're gonna do is chop it up a bit. And it's quite a bit in one can. So for the size salad that I'm doing, because again, I have a huge focus, thank you, a huge focus on the seaweed that we're gonna put in. And so here's the other thing I was just wondering, because I had rinsed the other one and I was like, wow, that didn't need a whole, sometimes I have to take things out, put it into a strainer and then just like really, really rinse it. And so, um, thank you so much for getting that out. And so I didn't have to really rinse that. And so this is very important. So when you do order jackfruit, you want to order it in water. Just like when you're buying sardines or anything else, you do not want to order it in oil or brine. You want to order it in water to have it be as fresh as humanly possible coming out of a can, all right? And so then when we just kind of chop it up like that, this is what it looks like. We're just gonna throw it into our salad we're going to use this other can right quick, and then we're going to be out of here, folks. And you'll see that you can go home and make you a fabulous dish in that same short period of time that we take in to do that. And you always have to emphasize, if I weren't talking and I was just focused on chopping, we'd be done already. So getting your lemon water in every single day, eating something green, trying to eat at least, and where are you? How many fruits do you eat on a regular basis? And you don't want to get it on a regular basis like, oh, a few days a week I do, you know, fruit. You just want to get to a point where you can say every single day I am having at least. And so wherever you are, start somewhere. And so maybe it's just one. At least every day I'm going to have an orange, you know. We're going to drink some fresh squeezed orange juice every day. That's so important. So what I do is I drink my warm lemon water every morning. Then I do my little stretches before I actually do my exercise. My little stretches to get me out of bed. Kind of stretches. And then within 30 minutes to an hour, I'll have a 8, 12 ounces of fresh squeezed orange juice. Within two hours, I'm having some type of fresh juice hopefully carrot and celery so there is the salad with the hemijini in it and then i'm going to put my seaweed in it and then i'll sprinkle it with just a little bit of oil and then i'll decide what type of seasonings i want to use so a little bit of oil is relative to the amount of salad that we have here so you're talking at least a tablespoon or two but what you want to do is just put enough on initially just to get it to a point where you can begin to mix in the herbs, the onions, all of the stuff that we chopped up before, the peppers, the celery, and then start tossing it with the jackfruit and the seaweed. And I love raw corn, so I'll probably thaw some frozen organic raw corn and throw it in here before I consume it. But this is what we end up developing. This bowl was way too small. And so I had no idea we were gonna do that much. And with just the few ingredients that I had, that's what you're able to do. And of course, the more jackfruit and seaweed you use, then of course, the more onions and things like that you probably wanna to put together. Um, and it's that simple. You don't really, because we have the fresh garlic and the ginger, I could add a little balsamic vinaigrette. I could add some red wine vinegar. Um, some people tend to want to put um, tomatoes, some sliced tomatoes and things. I wouldn't put it in the salad. If anything, I would put a dish on the side, maybe a bed of lettuce with some sliced tomatoes, and then dump some of this on top. And so how else can we consume this? The little seaweed um, nori sheets, 
You can stack those and put it in. It becomes a really wicked um, sushi. After that, the texture of the jackfruit will substitute for you having to use a rice. Um, uh, you could do a raw bread slice. You know, we do the raw toast out of chickpeas and uh, the carrot pulp. You can simply have some of that and put this on it. You can just eat it as it is. It's just, it's got an awesome taste to it. So, so what, what's missing here? You can use a tad bit of sea salt if you want, or you could use a little bit of natural uh, soy. Um, the uh, uh, umishui, what is it? I'm forgetting. Um, that's paprika, which I always put in everything. Remember, we talk about the importance of cinnamon and nutmeg. The five, you can put just a little in there. So you just kind of play with it for yourself. Once you start putting your additional seasoning blends on, and the amount of olive oil that you want, you can determine whether or not you need anything else. Remember, one of the reasons I didn't, because a lot of times I will use uh, sea salt when I'm doing the pâtés and things like that. But when you're using this much seaweed, seaweed comes from the sea. So the trace minerals that sit at the bottom of the ocean floor where you're getting all those great nutrients are coming from the seawater, which is filled with what? Salt, natural sea salt. So it's just perfect without having to add anything to it. And that's what you want. You want to kind of get to a point where you're starting to develop a natural sense of what food really tastes like. And that way you don't have to use a million things. I also always have the raw honey around because you always want to use something sweet, something sour. You know, the four legs of cooking, but not a lot. So that much salad just a tablespoon of raw honey is just going to give it another addition of flavor. I probably would add some jalapeno peppers uh, personally, and like I said, some raw corn, but that's got a fabulous taste to it. Your family and friends would love it. It's so good for your immune health. You wanna know what makes us well, what keeps us well, what allows us to fight back when we're not well. These are the types of foods that will do that for you. Moving into the new year, start focusing on who's your family, what's in your environment, who's in your environment, keeping fresh fruits and vegetables around you, fresh water, fresh juices, positive people, strong people. Sometimes we've got to let that negativity go, get away from it. When you're reading and you're just glancing through these things, even if judiciously you're screening what you're watching on Facebook, it just, it takes a toll. So you kind of just want to be refreshed and give yourself that time and that energy. And to be as kind as you can possibly be to your fellow man, but especially those of the household of faith, those who are also trying to do the will of the Father. Thank you.